Welcome in to the flagship. I'm your host, Zach Barry. Joining me as always, Mr. Greg Jones, aka the Meat Man from LB's Meat Market here on Wednesday morning. Ole Miss Baseball. Top 25 reps. Number 22 in the country. I, I wouldn't say snuck by Austin P. It was a it was a good rebound and a uh, resounding victory. I know. I know the governors grabbed four in the ninth, but the bullpen slammed the door. Ole Miss now 18 and eight as uh, Mike Bianco and company head into the weekend. will host top 25 Kentucky. We will get into uh, baseball. We'll talk some March Madness. And then, of course, Greg will give us uh, the rundown on the latest with the uh, thoroughbreds. Before we get into the rundown here on the show, do want to remind you, we are powered by College Corner, three locations, Oxford, Flowood, Ridgeland. If you can't get to any of those three, check them out, collegecornerstore.com. Spring is here. Baseball is here. Spring football. We've got Pro Day going on as we record this. Um, the Grove Bowls next month. It, everything is starting to really get downhill in terms of spring summer sports. Um, look no further than College Corner. You need to upgrade your uh, your wardrobe, get you some polos, some quarter zips, maybe a couple lightweight hoodies, some real tree gear, all of that and more. College Corner, three locations. The new one in Oxford, Sisk Avenue. Go check them out. And uh, after you go to College Corner, make sure to uh, swing on by University Avenue. Go see Greg and the folks at LB's Meat Market, 2008 University Avenue. You got the Lane Train special every day. You've got house-made sausage, you've got steaks, you've got ribeyes, you've got the cooler. Be sure to uh, run over there and throw a couple things in your sack before you go. Some killer deals over there that you can't beat anywhere else. That's LB's Meat Market in Oxford, Mississippi. Yours truly right here, Greg Jones. Uh, I guess we can say on the ones and twos, the ones and twos of the uh, – of the uh, butcher shop. So Greg, good morning. Uh, Rebs took it on the chin early, but uh, rebounded nicely and uh, got their 18th win. Yeah. I mean, you know, three and three in the conference, uh, playing two pretty tough teams, I would think to start out the sec play. So uh, don't, don't have any breaks this week. We got Kentucky coming to town and uh, you know, another hot team. And with, with that being said, you know, whenever we started back on, on this baseball and like, I don't think all SEC teams invested money in the baseball program as much as they did other sports. So now that you've got everybody investing in NIL stadium upgrades and everything like that, and like there's really not going to be any weeks that off during this uh, SEC play. So Kentucky's going to um, going to come in and uh, you know definitely try to take two out of three, and that's that's you know the goal every year every year whenever you try to play in these SEC games. So try to take two out of three out of every, every week. But, um, you know, I like the Saturday guy, man. He's solid. Uh, I don't know if he's going to switch him or switch the rotation rotation around or not, but uh, kind of roll with what we got. And, you know, obviously the guys can hit the ball. Um, that's a real good bounce back game on Saturday. I, I, you know, I know Friday wasn't the greatest, but with that being said, you know, you throw that game away and, bounce back Saturday and get a win and, uh, you know, at least take it to Sunday and try to get the series win on Sunday. So it didn't work out on Sunday, but Hey, look, it's early in the season kind of testing what those, uh, what we got. And as far as arms and, uh, bats and so, uh, just kind of roll with it and see what we got. We got this week, uh, at home in Kentucky, definitely need to, uh, protect home field advantage. If you always take two out of three at home, um, you know, the scenario and the, uh, record comes out in your favor, but, um, you know, we'll be tested this week again. You mentioned the rotation this weekend. Actually, Mike Bianco is opting to uh, shake things up a bit as JT Quinn, typically a Sunday guy. He started, uh, he's thrown some Fridays, um, still dealing with some injuries. He's got some blisters on his throwing hand. They're going to let him, you know, put him on the shelf for a little bit, let him rest up, heal. Um now you've got Riley Maddox, who was pretty electric last week against um, Southern Miss. Uh, he will be going uh, on Sunday now. 
um, or excuse me, Friday, Liam Doyle, like you said, really good on Saturday. He made a, uh, a top 10 offense at Tennessee look silly last week in the lone win in Knoxville. And then uh, Gunnar Dennis, who's been throwing Friday, will now move to Sunday. So um, I like it. Uh, I, I like the shakeup. I, I think Grace and Sonia, not there yet. Um, probably needs some midweek work, needs to kind of fine tune some of that secondary stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I, like you said, another test. There's no break in the SEC. So you get Kentucky. Um, but, uh, you know, as we do every year, we make the joke. Uh, Kentucky, a much different offensive ball club uh, away from Kentucky as uh, that little short porch and right uh, is pretty handy for left-handed hitters for the Wildcats. So um, I'm excited to see what the rotation looks like. Top 25 team comes in town. Uh, I, I like Bianco's uh, move here to shake things up because Maddox, he's earned the right to have a shot at the weekend now. Um, so yeah, and he's going to be pumped up. I mean, this is like, you know, yeah. this is a big spotlight for him Friday night, you know, um, local kid. I mean, you know, Mississippi product, uh, played on the big stage. So, I mean, he's probably, if he can just, you know, keep it under control the first two innings, that's the big deal is, you know, whenever you get amped up for games like this and you, you know, finally get to, um, be put in the spotlight to step up, uh, you just got to, you know, stay in the moment, uh, keep your feet on the ground and, uh, and, you know, trust your mechanics and, and just do what do what you go uh, what you've been doing when you went out there, you know. I, I know Southern was playing really hot b- baseball at the time, and uh, it could be it could be no different. Just you know, just stay in the stay in your zone and stay in your element, and you know, get the job done. Yeah, I mean, under the lights should be a lot of fun. Um, I will say, looking way down the road here, but Baseball America uh, put out their field of sixty four projections earlier this week. Ole Miss, a three seed in Norman, Oklahoma, as the Sooners are the eight seed. So a three seed alongside Nebraska and Bowling Green. So that's interesting there. Um, But, yeah, I I think the the offense is starting to really churn. Um, That's been kind of the theme of our show, right, Greg, where it's just, hey, these new look guys, they got to get comfortable, get settled in, just everybody take a breath. And, um, you know, guys early in the year that were, you know, struggling, maybe pressing a little bit. Um, Luke Hill last night, two for three RBI. Andrew Fisher, two for four, two RBIs. Jackson Ross continues his stretch of really good ABs, uh, one for three. Yeah, that definitely takes some stress off pitching whenever, you know, you can give up two or three runs and be like, hey, you know, hey, guys, we need four. Um, yeah. So. And you've you've seen the crooked numbers, uh, and especially with two uh, two outs. It's yeah. eventually going to come, and it's baseball. It's not. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's not a sprint. You got to you know make sure you have plenty of horse when you come around that curve for the stretch, and uh, just got to time your t- time your horse right. Yeah, uh, Tracing Hughes, one of the big gets out of the portal, three for four last night, three RBIs. Almost really needs him to swing a good bat because um, he'd be a valuable piece down you know, on the outskirts, the meat of the order down at the bottom, you need him to, to be having good at bats, good barrels. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think right now um, this offense is kind of slowly turning into what most thought it would be last night. Austin P puts up a four spot in the first um, Ole Miss answers back with four and then a four spot in the third for the rebels and then they added a couple more. Um, Ethan Lege just continues to just smash, um, hit another bomb last night. Um, so right now, I mean, you've got some some really good approaches at the plate with Lege, Fisher, Jackson Ross, and then it looks like Tracing Hughes and, and Luke Hill are coming around, kind of turning the corner a bit. You, you pair all of those guys with known commodities like Ethan Groff, who's been steady, still hitting over 300, and then Will Furness um, struggled a bit. I mean, the, last... line, the lineup is definitely patching up. You can definitely kind of try to patch some things together and, and yeah. really kind of fortify a, a solid, you know, lineup that you can go into SEC play. Uh, you're definitely going to get some people that are uh, in and out. I mean, I, you know, I know Burford, he wants to try to still put Burford at second and 
uh, do that sort of thing, but it is what it is. Uh, but you've got to have, you've got to have that bat down the, down the stretch when that, whenever you need a pinch hit or somebody gets hurt or something, you know, something like that. So it's good to have depth top, top to bottom. And it's uh, good to not know what our best lineup really is. Yeah. Um, you got to like the three at the top leading the team in OPS and Leger Fisher and Ross. And then you've got Wolf Ernest down there right under at 977 OPS. So they've got some big boppers. I, I think if the pitching can kind of iron itself out on the weekends, you, you got to like your chances if you're Ole Miss right now. Yeah, I'm and- really feeling if you just take two out of three at home, if you just can protect your home, home territory, you know, you've yeah. seen it with the football this year. You've seen it with the basketball. I know we had, you know, rough uh, in towards the end of the season with basketball at home, but you, you establish that home presence and, you know, it's established to where it's hard for teams to come in here and take two out of three from you and uh, always establish that you're going to take two out of three in, in every home series. And um, just, just got to take care of your, uh, take care of your home turf. That's for sure. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. Uh, Ole Miss has truly one of the better home field advantages in college baseball. Uh, you know, with the weather getting nicer, students back on campus and, and baseball playing well. I, I expect there to be some good crowds, um, especially in the coming weeks with not only the weather getting better, but the Grove Bowl in April. You know, that'll be a big crowd. And then Double Decker later in the year always has a Oxford buzz in. So, yeah, I, I think Ole Miss is in as good a spot as it could be right now after a tough season last year basically flipping the entire roster and uh, adding a bunch of new pieces. But yeah, I, I like where this team's at right now. And I think we're, we're learning a lot. So um, kind of turning our attention to the tournament. Uh, I mentioned baseball America has Ole Miss as a three seed. I think that's pretty reasonable right now. I, I think two or three seed somewhere <laughs> It is pretty feasible, right? Yeah, you're not. I mean, unless you start going on a tear, and you know, I don't think you'll ever. I don't think we were ever a host um, site. Uh, that's just my my opinion. Uh, I would think a solid three seed would be, you know, very respectable anywhere. Uh, and with that being said, you just want to get in the tournament. Who knows what happens when you get in the tournament and you get in that, you know, that life you know, life or death mode and. Uh, start playing with, you know, with no boundaries and no limits and uh, taking a, taking a rip at a, a you know, at a three Oh pitch or that sort of thing. So just trusting your game and trusting your team and get to that, uh, to that regional is kind of, I would think where the goal is, but you take two out of three at home, pretty much every home series. I think you kind of you establish yourself that you can be a solid three seed in the tournament. Yeah. All right. Um, as we, uh, you know, they'll probably ship us somewhere. They'll probably ship us out West or, you know, cause they shipped us to uh, Miami or that, you know, they're not going to try to, you know, hook us up with Southern Miss or do something like, you know, do something like do or do Baton Rouge region or Fayette, Fayetteville region. I would think they would probably either ship you up North or ship you out West. It's kind of funny. You, you mentioned that and you know, the committee, <laughs> Typically, there's no rhyme or reason. They do love those storylines where you've got, you know, a former coach going up against his former wow. program in the Super or like – So, you look at the basketball. I mean, that's just – I mean, they they literally work that out to where they have those kind of drama-filled uh, situations. Yeah, I mean, look, everybody's – well, depending on who you got in your bracket, but I think a lot of people are really hoping for that Arizona-North Carolina Elite Eight. So, get that Caleb Love game. Um, well, they got the North Carolina, Michigan State in the second round. I mean, that's a, you know, yeah. a really, really awesome matchup. Two, so. <laughs> two, of the, two of the most elite programs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of worked out and uh, they've ha- they've got some pre- they've had some decent matchups. You know, I felt bad for Auburn. But, you know, whenever the, you make mistake mistake you... like that, it's just no, I didn't. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I don't know. I feel bad. I felt that, bad for my bracket. But, yeah, I, yeah, I do feel bad. I mean, I feel feel bad for the first bracket I feel, I filled out. Thank God I did a second one because I had Auburn in the first one. So the second one I've got Arizona. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, you know, Purdue's playing good ball. I mean, did they win by forty five? I think. 
I mean, they, yeah, they're playing like a one. <laughs> finally, Purdue is Purdue. Purdue has really screwed a lot of people over the last couple of years. Matt Painter probably gotten a lot of a uh, lot of flack, and for good reason for how bad the Boilermakers have flopped in recent tournaments. But they look good. Um, I was working Saturday, and I missed the first half of the UK game. And I called Uncle Donnie. I was like, Uncle Donnie, what is going on? Y'all, y'all are down by four. He goes, this guy, I don't even know how to say his name. He's got a hairline worse than yours. I think he might be 35 years old. He is just throwing stuff up, like, over his shoulder, underneath his leg. This is It's ridiculous. I go, uh, whenever he told me that, kind of felt really secure that they might get me. Because it, it usually, yeah. they used, like, St. Peter's last year, uh, just – I mean, I don't know if it's a Calipari curse or if it's, but uh, yeah, a lot of sad souls in you in, in, Le- in Lexington right now. Yeah, I, look, it was a combination of the Golki was the kid from Oakland that was just unconscious. It's a combination of him having the game of his life and just Kentucky just didn't I rise just, to man, the occasion. I, I, I love those stories like Oakland and everything because. They've been playing for their lives for the last two months. So, I mean, like, yeah. uh, with Kentucky uh, losing in the first round of Texas A&M, you know, the SEC tournament really didn't matter because the, you know, big picture is the national championship. But when you yeah. run into a team that's been, you know, playing that good of a ball and, you know, I, I honestly believe regardless of the NIL and everything, um, you know, team always wins over talent sometimes. And, you know, Oakland – uh, knock down big shots when need be like uh, in the corner when that guy knocked it down uh, in the corner I go wow I was like I guess it was destined to be for this team to beat Kentucky and you know whenever they interviewed the coach it was kind of awesome because you know he goes we wanted to play Kentucky we didn't we, you know we we weren't shying away that you know we were a 14 seed and Kentucky was a three seed and um, you know you know that's why you just got to play the game every single time. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Cisco Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 601-953-8449 and get your free quote today. This is Cali. With C Spire's blazing fast nationwide 5G network, she's got her fans in the palm of her hands. Live streaming her Mississippi blues from her phone wherever she is. It's out there wherever they are. Right now, get the latest 5G phone on us. Only at Seaspire, customer inspired. Before we get into uh, the Sweet 16, and Greg's going to uh, pick some winners, um, we do want to remind you a uh, show also brought to you by USA Benefits Group and our buddy Drew Moak. Um, if you're looking to cut those premiums 20 to 30%, uh, look no further than Drew and USA Benefits Group. You can give him a call, 601-953-8449, or check him out, usabg.com slash D-M-O-A-K, and get a free quote. He's got access to 35 different carriers. He's licensed in seven states, but he is also an Ole Miss grad and located in Mississippi. So not only is he reliable, but he is accessible. He's local. That's important. That's critical for a health insurance agent. He can hook it up. That's Drew Moak and USA Benefits Group, 601-953-8449. All right. Um, so the bracket, how we doing? How we looking? Uh, how many uh, How many Sweet 16 teams did you get right? 
Well, you know, I don't have it on hand, but I still have all uh, Final Four uh, available. I've got Arizona. Go. I've got Arizona, Illinois, Purdue, and I think I did a switcheroo, and I maybe did Marquette getting there. I don't know. I'll have okay. to go back and look. But, um, you know, I, I like Marquette. You know, they've been playing good ball. I know they play Tennessee next. That's going to be a tough matchup, uh, right, isn't that? Next, uh, Tennessee plays Creighton. Uh, Creighton, Creighton, okay. Marquette um, has they're on that bottom, bottom F-A-N. half. Right. In, oh, they got NC State. Yeah, so that should be a good matchup. And, you know, that's another team that you probably don't want to run into regardless of how many games they played and how many days. Uh, run NC run. State playing some good ball. And when you get that confidence, you know, you can probably run through whatever. So, uh, there's a lot of uh, awesome. Uh, I like Illinois, man. They, they, I think they've made the Sweet 16. Uh, how many years in a, in a row? And th- they've always been uh, pretty consistent uh, coming in on March. Um, you know, Gonzaga's kind of snuck in there. They've, uh, um, I, they took care of McNeese. I know th- th- um, that was an easy matchup, but th- you know, Kansas was just outmatched the whole time. So man, don't know where. Him. So um, there's a lot of really good matchups. I, I, you know, how 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 good is Purdue really, and how 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 death mode are they going to go, and if they're going to try to beat teams by 30 points, why not? You know, this is the time to do it. It doesn't matter who you're playing, but uh, you know, with the North, uh, with Houston and that Texas A&M game, that was an awesome game. Uh, there, yeah. There's a there's a there's been a lot of really really cool games, and uh, and. Uh, the the George Mason game, uh, I thought that was George Mason and no not, not James Madison Wisconsin. I thought that was a good game. So there was a really bunch of really cool you know first round matchups and that uh, yeah. you know you look at Yale uh, that was a I think so the bet next year is I had a buddy had one of my workers JP he I think he got like a free four hundred dollar credit from Bet.com or whatever from one of the DraftKings. So what he ended up doing was put fifty dollars on every underdog in the first round. Okay. He got he got paid on Yale, Oakland. I'm trying to think, there was a couple other like um, um, kind of upsets that paid really well. He at one point, I think he told me he was up twelve hundred twelve hundred dollars on the fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, you had James Madison was a winner, 12-5. You had um, Colorado was a 10-7 upset. NC State was an 11-6. Yale, the 13-4. Duquesne, the 11-6. Yep, that was a, that was a nice little payday. Uh, Grand Canyon was a 12-5 upset. Um, I think he told me that the $50 on Oakland paid four fifty or four forty. There you go. And then Let's the see. Yale one, and the Yale one, I think paid like five twenty. Wow, there was a let me find it. There was a stat um, that was going around Twitter last weekend. Uh, a guy bet a thousand dollars on every underdog money line the entire tournament, and thirteen wins, twenty three losses, plus seventy one hundred in net profit. So uh, was that? Uh... Uh, show a Tani's uh interpreter, <laughs> yeah. It might it might be his burner, but yeah, you gotta you gotta throw down some coin, but plus 7,100 is, is not bad, but yeah, I so for the no, I mean, you definitely feel bad when you have like a, a $50 or a hundred dollars on a, a big underdog and they're getting skull dragged by 30. You're like, yeah, I uh definitely had $50 on the money line on the underdog here, yeah, like the people that thought maybe JMU had a shot against Duke, which, look, to their credit, Duke has kind of, you know, they've kind of stepped on their, you know, stepped on their own foot in in tournaments in recent years. So, and JMU played great. I mean, they whipped Wisconsin, and they were good all year, but they got smoked by Duke. Um, I mean, these Sweet 16 matchups are fun. I mean, right off the bat, you got UConn-San Diego State rematch the national title from last year. Illinois, Iowa State is fun as hell. Illinois is the number one offense in the country. Iowa State, the number one defense. Something's got to give there. You get the, I mean, just if you like track meets, 
I mean, we're going to talk about horses in a little bit. There are going to be some some horses out running in North Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama. That one, yeah, isn't that uh, isn't in the last ten years the uh, Alabama's had the highest total over in each three games, and it's literally like the last or something. I think it's one seventy nine. I think it's one seventy nine and a half is the total. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably right because I know this one was in the one seventies when it initially uh, was. But released. I think it's one seventy nine and a half. I mean, honestly, I think the only potential blowout in the Sweet Sixteen is Clemson, Arizona. Clemson's a fun story, but I think Arizona is just going to be too much, uh, too many haymakers. Um, I, Tommy Lloyd's team is really, really, really good. They're experienced. But again, you know, it's March Madness. You, I would it's not true. be surprised with it five minutes ago with Clemson being up one or down one, and you're like, here's the chalk bet that I'll just assume that would be yeah. the best bet on the board, and, you know, it's a one-point game with two minutes left. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, I've said it on you several. Gotta, you can't trust the ACC, man. They're, I mean, you you got Clemson, you've got Duke, you've got NC. I mean, you know, they're they're they're. It's a tough. It's a tough conference, and uh, they yeah. they always they they always bring it. To, um, I mean, I think Hubie Davis is eight zero against the spread in his uh, NCAA uh, tournament career. So that's there something you go. To throw out there. Um. Yeah, Brownell's done a hell of a job at Clemson. Uh, it's a good story. Uh, and then Creighton, Tennessee. Uh, I mean, don't sleep on that one. That one's going to be a ton of fun. Creighton's a really solid ball club. I mean, they outlasted Oregon in two overtimes. And then Tennessee has been impressive in the first two rounds. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you, you finish up with Houston and Duke. I mean, that 1-4 is going to be a dogfight. And then Purdue – Gonzaga, I, I think the Zags got a good shot. I really yeah. do. Um, I mean, they're as well, efficient I mean, they're as anyone. The, they they uh, did a really good job pairing these, you know, these matchups up. And, you know, if, if if all the cards played right, you know, the you know the most intriguing one for me is that Illinois-Iowa State. I mean, you got to – Yeah. Uh, that should be a slobber knocker. Yeah. All right. Um. Before we get out of here, uh, I do want to remind everyone, like we always do, on this Wednesday show um, podcast also brought to you by black type thoroughbreds. Check them out. Black type um, it, It's a, a group of folks that have a passion for horse racing. And um, I mean, just everything that you could ask for when you're looking at um, investing or just, you know, getting into horse racing, getting, getting, you don't have to be an expert because, Black type is they're the experts. They take care of it. Expertise, integrity, and a ton of experience on that team. Um, yeah, it's fun. Uh, check them out. Blacktypetb.com. You can email them info at blacktypetb.com. Um, they're based in Lexington, so they're around it year in, year out, 365. Um, so yeah, shoot them a shoot them a text, shoot them an email, sign up for the newsletter, just tell them you're interested, and uh, they'll take it from there. Um, what's, uh, yeah. what's, yeah, what's Jake, called, Jake called me the other day and he's like, man, he's like, I just got back from Keeneland watching the, the two-year-olds work out. I'm like, man, and wouldn't that be nice just to like wake up, take the kid <laughs> to, to school, maybe get a nice cup of coffee and then just head out to Keeneland and just watch your horses just gallop around a circle, you know? Uh, no, they're, uh, that. he's got Barbatina, uh, that she's running <laughs> in New York uh not this week but next week and uh it's another kentucky oats prep so hopefully she can hit the board get some uh, more kentucky oats points and get that uh spot locked up for the kentucky oats this year um i know that keeneland's going to be uh opening up here in april so they've got a couple um couple a uh, couple stakes stakes runners i think admiss waves is running on the 12th and i don't know what they're doing with sacred wish yet he just told me either either going to run it at, run her at Keeneland on the 20th, which uh, would be 420, which I'll be in Lexington for that weekend, um, or uh, head down to Gulfstream. So, uh, but yeah, no, they've got some uh, really uh, uh, three races coming up and some and some big races and got to get some qualifying points for the uh, Kentucky Oats and lock up that stop, uh, lock up that spot for Barbatina. What, um... I guess in terms of um, 
Yeah, I went to Louisiana Derby. That was awesome. Okay, Thank yeah, you. I was going to ask you, how, how was that? Uh, man, you know, actually, it was turned out to be really awesome. It, uh, it was a really, really, really good crowd. I, that's probably one of the better – best crowds i've seen uh down there so it was awesome it was good to see people you know dress up in their funny hats and uh the ladies were definitely out so uh guys if y'all want to go down the fairgrounds and go watch a horse race i'd probably recommend Louisiana derby day that's just my uh my experience with uh going down there i think i went down there my mom asked me she goes Greg, how many times have you been to the fairgrounds and watch a horse race I go, well, I've seen my Philly five times, and then I went down for the Risen Star. And so pretty sure I've been like five or six times in New Orleans. So never thought in a million years I'd be like, hey, just ready. Can't wait to go down to New Orleans and watch my Philly run and uh, the fairgrounds. But um, she uh, she didn't win, but she uh, she got a learning experience uh, first time on the dirt. So can't uh couldn't get had a lot of people call me and you know wish me luck and you know tell me how good she was going to do but i you know until she crosses the line first uh she'll you know i'll be a believer but she um she's she kind of took a little uh a little cat nap at the gate and uh whenever you're running in a six furlong sprint you can't you know you got to come out the gate real quick and but no she did good she uh, even though that you know she didn't get out the gate real well she made a really good, a decent little come back down the stretch, and she finished fourth and uh, didn't get claimed. And so we still own the little filly, and uh, we're on to the next race. Uh, you know, it's just her day will come, and uh, she's got to stay positive. But um, I definitely won't, don't regret, you know, not buying her and doing everything that I've done with her. So definitely had fun with her, and uh, who knows? She might win next time out, but uh, – We've got the uh, Louisiana Derby coming up. I know Chasing Freedom uh, with Brad Cox and Godolphin uh, was the winner. So they've kind of locked themselves in uh, the Kentucky Derby. You've got about four, I think you've got five horses, maybe six that are kind of mathematically kind of locked into the Derby. Um, I know um, Chasing Freedom is is one of those. Sierra Leone is one of those in the top six. But um, um with that being said, there's a lot more. You've got the Arkansas Derby coming up this weekend at Oakline. Um, you know, big, big race there, 50 points involved uh, for Kentucky Derby points. Uh, so uh, you just, it, it's a, it's an ongoing process. So it's not like, you know, uh, you went, you win one race and uh, you're in, but uh, you have to consistently run. It's tough. You've got to pick and choose your spots. Uh, you know, I think Sierra Leone has done it r really good breaking his maiden early, running in the Risen Star, you know, getting those early der derby points and kind of locking yourself up, um, you know, on the derby trail. And you can take breaks and, you know, choose your spots where you, you know, can get in. So uh, I've got a, a buddy named Jay Goodwin. He's uh, got a – he owns Tuscan Gold, and they finished third at the Louisiana Derby. So they got some uh, derby points for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for coming up. And I don't know – what they're shooting for next, but you know, you uh, may f uh, the first week in May, you know, comes early and you got to get those points early and often to where you can get them taken care of. So, um, with that being said, it's uh, it's that time of year to be drinking uh, bourbons and bringing out the funny hats and uh, getting ready for the derby. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of that time of year, uh, people are starting to dust off those grills. Clean off those grates a little bit. What you got? Hey, I'll give a little grill tip. I'll give a little grill tip. Oh, so yeah. I saw on, well, I you know, obviously food uh, videos pop up on Instagram all the time. Somebody took a, a split of onion in half and cleaned the grill with the onion, like, uh, you know, put it mm -hmm. on, baked a little spike and just cleaned it on, uh, cleaned the grill and then end up throwing uh, the, the, uh, the grill cleaning onion into the coals. And then turned around and took the other half of the grill and made salsa with the other onion with some tomatoes and jalapenos and that sort of thing. So clean your grill if it's rusty. Instead of using a steel wool or something like that where there might be chemicals involved, just use a just a trusty old white onion and uh, clean your grill with the white onion. There you go. Okay, I, look, the, on, only on the flagship can you get these kinds of tips. Um, 
So yeah, tell uh tell us what you got uh in the shop this week and what folks can swing by and pick up this weekend. Well, uh Kentucky just called me, so I've got to poison them this weekend and hopefully <laughs> so we can complete. No, I um I beat I fed last night, I fed the Rebs, um, did the old beef stroganoff, they're big beef stroganoff guys. They they either they like to have it every other week. So did beef stroganoff for the boys. We'll do bacon wrap pork loin for them Friday. Uh, I think I'm going to do boudin. I've got some uh, bacon trim and stuff like that. So going to make a big batch of boudin. Probably going to do the seafood boudin and just like the straight up Cajun style boudin. Um, I've had a bunch of people want me to do the blue dream sausage. So I made a batch of blue dream sausage. We did. um, I'll give you a little tip. You can go to uh, Sam's and get the cheddar biscuits, the red lobster cheddar biscuits. Okay. So get you, get red lobster cheddar biscuits and then come to LB's and we've just made that Colby Jack that smoked Colby Jack sausage and okay. just make a uh, homemade sausage balls with the fresh with the fresh Colby Jack and the um, cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster and it's the best sausage ball you'll ever have I promise or you can do the Blue Dream you can do the Blue Dream and some uh, pancake uh, mix and make. Uh, uh, sausage ball with the uh with the blue dream so uh lots of awesome uh, lots of sausage we just got uh, sausage just got done doing some uh meatballs so you can come and get a six pack of meatballs throw them in a sauce and put them on a sandwich or put them on a p- pasta so trying to do more things that are real convenient for people to do or they can take home um and 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 warm up absolutely well you can go see Greg and uh, get more grilling tips and uh, more uh, hacks for uh, red lobster take home. Uh, yeah, just trying to just trying to well, make people happy. I mean, not, now that now that uh, I probably told everybody about the red lobster biscuit at Sam's, they're like, "All right, we got to go try that now." And yeah. you know, you can try it with any sausage, but it's really good with the LB's um, sausages because I add cheese and extra flavor but you can just use it with plain jimmy dean but it just it don't hit the same (laughs) no not at all uh well yeah greg and uh the rest of the folks at lb's uh got you covered 2008 university avenue go see him before you head to swayze field and uh pick up some uh some protein uh that is going to do it for this wednesday edition of the flagship appreciate greg hopping on with us and uh as always appreciate College Corner and USA Benefits Group for bringing this show to you. We'll be back next week with Greg. We'll break down the Final Four and uh, look ahead to uh, more Ole Miss baseball as uh, SEC play is upon us and the Rebs are in the thick of it. So stay locked in. OMSpirit.com. Jake Thompson, our boys at Ole Miss Pro Day today. He'll have a full recap of that later when it concludes. The basketball transfer portal is just going oh, crazy. Wow. <laughs> uh, I, I yeah. mean, I'm, no, I, there's a, there's a, I saw a list of the, uh, on the transfer portal. There's a guy that's got an awesome name that I really, really want. He, I think he's like number seven. It's like, Oh man, I cannot believe I don't remember this guy's name. He has like the best all time name ever. It's like pickle pickle or something like that. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to look it up. We've been retweeting a lot from the, the basketball transfer portal and it's i don't crazy. know if we're on these guys or we like or which one we're on because there's like a list there's like a list of 15 of them that's a great question greg you can find all of the targets that Ole Miss has contacted and or are in the mix for at omspirit.com we've got a transfer portal hub that uh i basically just have a tab open where i'm updating it constantly Ole Miss is casting a wide net greg they're, they're trying to Rebuild a roster quickly. Um, uh, look, Do we know who's staying, who's going, who's not really confirmed? Sorry, it's not. not There's I mean, only... what about what about Caitlin Clark being uh, the leak? The leak of her getting paid five million dollars after the tournament. Did you hear Did about you... that? Ice Cube got that twenty-one Jump Street money, baby. He's throwing five million at her. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, God, I mean, man. I mean, whatever. That's wild. Uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, sorry. It, it, <laughs> yeah, look, it, we've got Didn't you covered. Need to go off record right there with Caitlin Clark. 
I, good for her. I, I hope she takes it. Yeah, that's just – yeah, I hope she does too. I just feel uh, bad that, like he said, it literally is supposed to be private, and then the next thing you know, it, it's on Twitter, and he's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, hey. But I guess when you have an extra $5 million laying around, you, you, you give it to Caitlin Clark to come on a, a basketball tour. Yeah, I mean, go get paid, homie. Get that $5 million large. Um, yeah, we've got you covered at the spirit. We've got coverage of the portal football recruiting as well. More visitors will be on campus Thursday and this weekend. So stay locked in. If you're not already a member, uh, join the resistance. It's only a dollar. You can join the conversation on the message board, read all the premium articles and, uh, and whatnot. So for Greg, I am Zach. This has been the flagship. We appreciate y'all as always until next time we out of here.